Hello, everybody. So I'm back. So this is now part two of uh, uh, chapter 20. Uh, by the way, there's 102 slides, but we won't be doing all of them, all right? So we're up to slide 11. So here's some more terminology. So you should all know, st uh, now, stock options are traded on organized exchanges, such as the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange and the New York Board of uh, Trade and the Chicago Board Options Exchange. However, there are customized contracts, too, that are written for things like weather. Um, and some people need some very customized things. But bear in mind, if something's customized, it's not going to be very liquid, right? So stocks, uh, uh, options I'm trading on exchanges can be sold and bought. All right. So, uh, so by convention, all traded options expire on the Saturday following the third Friday of the month. So that's about the third week or so. All right. All right. So open interest is the total number of contracts of a particular option that have been written. So that's uh, open interest. All right. So that's another uh, term that it's important to know. All right. So that's open interest. A lot of terminology here. So here's a, a, a basically a bunch of uh, e eBay call and put options. Now, first of all, here's the call, right? Call. Here's the puts. So there's a line going down the middle here, right? Right. So here's the current stock price. You see the current stock price up here? Depending on the size of the uh, um, number of shares you bought, right? So open interest is the total number. Just want to remind everybody, the total number of contracts of a particular option that have been written. So here's the open interest, right? See that? This is the volume uh, for the day. This is the previous price. This is the price change from the previous price, right? This was the last sale. And here is the bid and the ask on the premium. Okay, obviously there's always a difference, right? There's a, there's a multiplier of 100 here, right? Remember I said there's 100 shares of eBay, so there's a multiplier there. Okay, so this is a typical table, and you can find all these in... Uh, on Chicago Board Options Exchange, as it says right here, and you can get, uh, they have good educational stuff up there. All right, so uh, at the money, so let's be straight in here. At the money means an option whose um, exercise price is equal to the current stock price, exercise or strike price, right? So you're right at the money. In the money means you have an option whose value is immediately uh, exercised. If it is, it would be positive, right? Your strike price is below the current option price, right? You can make money. And out of the money, you're just the opposite. You're not going to sell a stock for a, a higher strike price than the current price of the stock, right? So so these are three important terms, and it's a, it's important for you to know this, okay? I want to make sure everyone's clear. All right, now deep in the money means just what it sounds like. It's very, very far in the money. So uh, And the opposite, of course, is deep out of the money. So let me let let me just do a quick uh, a quick example of what what would be deep in the money. Let's say someone bought the Amazon is up around pushing tw over twenty four hundred, right? Say you bought an option on Amazon for twenty uh, with a strike price of twenty bucks. It should be obvious that you are very very deep in the money, right? You're very deep in the money. All right, so here's an example of uh, purchasing an option on eBay from that table, all right? So you can go over this example. And uh, so from table 20.1, the ask price of this option is $1.66, right? So again, you multiply it by, uh, look, you're going to buy 10 contracts, and there's 100 shares per contract. So that's how you, this is what you have to pay. And of course, there's going to be commissions, right, which we're ignoring. So because this is a call option and the strike price is above the current stock price, the option is uh, out of the money. Okay? Everyone clear about that? I want to make sure everyone uh, knows that. So just go over these problems. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, holler. All right, here's another alternative example. And this one is on, again, you can buy options on the Dow index, right? This is options on the Dow. Right, so you see options on the Dow. So there's a hundred multiplier here. Obviously, the Dow is like tw was twenty four thousand seven hundred, right? So, 
You always have to have it. You have, you have to go over the specs and go to CBOE's uh, site and go over the specs. All right. So how much money will this purchase cost you? And they have this whole thing right here, right? And I believe, I guess it's 25 contracts. I don't know if they said that. All right. So. All right. Oh. Although the most commonly traded options are on stock options, uh, there's other assets, as I just said, the S&P, the S&P 500, the S&P 100, the Dow Jones, right, and the NYSE, and also NASDAQ, right? So so you can buy options on many different, uh, many different products, you know, and uh, you can go on the websites and look at them. All right, so a hedge, a hedge is just the way it sounds. A hedge, you're trying to reduce risk by holding contracts whose payoffs are negatively correlated with some risk exposure. So, as I said, um, if you had a, a put, a protective put, you're hedging against the stock you own going down. Because if the stock went down, the put option would pay off, right? All right, now speculate. When investors use contracts or securities to place a bet, now here you're not reducing risk. Here you have one goal and one goal only, and what's that? Simply to make money, okay? You simply want to make money. All right, so all right, so let's talk about option payoffs, and there's two slides here at expiration. This is when the uh, option is going to expire. So let's say you have a long position and a uh, call option. They don't say call option here, but they do here. So you bought a contract, right? If you're long, you bought a contract. So the value of a call option at expiration. Now, let me just explain what's being said here. It says it's the maximum of the stock minus the strike or zero. If you're out of the money, right, the contract expires worthless, right? That's this. If the strike is less than the stock, you're in the money. And this is the uh, what, what you're worth. So it's going to be the maximum of this or this. Obviously... Um, if this goes negative, if this is negative, then the maximum is zero and you don't pay off. So this is the value of the of the option. OK, this is the value of the option. S is the stock price. K is the exercise or strike price. C is the value of the call option and max is the maximum of the two quantities, either or in the parentheses. So this is what a graph looks like for a call option. You notice your break even point is right here. Here's the stock going up. Here's your strike. Anything above the strike is where you start if the option starts paying off. See this? So here's your payoff. It's a linear curve, okay? Now this is the intrinsic value, okay? This is called the intrinsic value. This is not taking into account the time value, which we'll get into when we do the option uh chapter 21, okay? Suffice it to say now, this is just the uh, option value. So here's a long position in a put on a put contract, and it's just opposite of what the uh, of the call was. You notice it's K minus S instead of S minus K, and it's the same type of uh, idea, okay? And again, it's the maximum, right? So here's an example of payoff of a put option at maturity. For, on Oracle, and the strike price is twenty bucks, and I, and you know you could uh, do that. So let S be the stock price and P be the value of the put option. So here's the equation, and here's the here's the function, right? Op, just opposite that of a call option, right? It's just opposite that of a call option. All right, again, you want a put option on Dell, and here's an alternative example, same idea. The strike is 12.50 a share, and they want you to plot this, and you can clearly see here, here's 12.50 at break even. See that? So, so you see the payoff is negative here. You know what I mean? It's positive, but uh, if the stock is going down, you're getting paid off. So that's the opposite of a call option. All right. So now let's get to the person who writes the contract, the writer or the seller. Uh, has an obligation, and this investor takes the opposite side of the contract to the investor who bought the option. Thus, the seller's call cash flows are the negative of the buyer's cash flows. So the investor collects the premium. Uh, I'm sorry, the writer or seller 
collects the premiums, but if you exercise the option, he's got to come up with that underlying, okay, the underlying assets. So if the stock don't move, he gets his money, and, uh, and that's the way uh, that goes. So here's the short position and a call option. Notice how much, notice how the guy who wrote it can continually lose money. So it's a losing proposition. He's ob obligated to give you the stock. So he, he can lose a lot of money here. If you, so righties can lose money. So here's an example of a short position and a put option on Oracle, right? And uh, you can clearly see this is a short position. And here is the graph, okay? Here is the graph. All right, so although although payouts, now we got to be careful. We got to distinguish between payouts and profits. The preceding graphs were on payouts and didn't include the premium, okay? However, when we include the premium, it's going to make a little difference. It's going to push the curves down because you got to overcome the premium you paid if you bought a call option, right? All right, so, so notice here how these start out negative and the break even is over here. And now we're including, notice this doesn't say payoff. This says profit. So now we're, we're negative. We're including the premiums we paid. So the, sh the shares have to move a, a little bit more, okay, before they can do that. All right, so here's an example of uh, the same idea of the profit now, not the payoff, okay. And here's the graphs, okay. Here's the graphs. All right, so you can see here it's about um, the uh, basically it's about four months or so, right? Four months here. You shorted a two month uh, bond with a yield of two and a half percent. So I'm not sure. I got to check this. I'm not sure this is correct. If it's a two month bond, I don't know why that's 130. Uh, two, it says here two month. I'll have to check that. All right. Uh, this has got to be checked. I'm not sure where, what's going on. I'll have, to, I'll have to verify that. All right, so the maximum loss uh, on, a, on, a, on a purchase call option is when the option expires worthless, right? You lose your premium. That's all you could ever lose is your premium if you write. So out of the money, call options are more likely to expire worthless. But if the stock goes up sufficiently, it will also have a much higher return than in the money. Call options have more extreme returns than the stock itself, all right? So... So the maximum loss on a put option, again, is the premium. And again, put options have higher returns in states with low percentage-wise, with low stock prices. And again, put options are used as insurance to hedge other risk in a portfolio. Uh, again, like a protective put. So here's option returns from purchasing an option and holding it to expiration. This, These are calls. You see the calls here? Just a simple a couple, a couple of examples, and here's puts. Different strikes, right? Everyone see that? Different strikes. All right, I'll stop here because I'm about 15 minutes in, and I'll do a part three.